We've got a lot to talk about today. PPI came in. We're going to look at the money market funds, Bitcoin and MicroStrategy getting very interesting today. Last night, Tesla had its big robo taxi event. Nvidia is saying some very interesting things here. But before we get going, smash that like button, subscribe if you've been with us for a while and haven't done so yet. Check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio. We've got some new products on there. And shout out to my fiance's class. They were integral in the design of the new hoodie that is out there. We decided they, they settled on the Astro Bowl on the back and Trade Cave on the front, and I made it so. So thank you for that. Your feedback was very important. Uh, it was crucial in the development of this particular product here. And we also have the sticker shop open now. So go ahead and check those things out. But let's get going for now. So checking out the PPI today, that came in. Let's take a look. So the PPI came in. At zero, it came in flat this time around with an expectation of one. So that's actually better than expected. That's great. Core PPI also came in better than expected at 0.1 versus 0.2. That's going to be good for us today. That means that it's probably already taking off. I haven't really looked yet. PPI year over year is 1.8 versus 1.9. I believe it was in the last read. And, oh, went too far, went too far. Here we go. And for PPI came in at 3.2% versus at 3.3 last time. It's not showing what the expected was. That's a bit interesting. Consumer sentiment set to come out here in a couple of minutes. That will also push the market. But be somewhat aware of the fact that we've got two feds on deck coming in later today. One already spoke today, and we've got two more coming in. Now let's take a look at the money market funds. This was interesting. I actually looked at this a little bit yesterday. So it is growing again. So this week, it grew to $6.474 trillion compared to last week's $6.463 trillion. And now let's go look at retail versus institutional. You can see that retail here added about eight uh, of the 10 billion added to the money market funds here. And institutions, they only added about, what is it? Oh, what was they at 5.53, they added three. So it was like 11. We got 11 billion and retail added eight uh while well, institutional added three to that pool now that's this is interesting here you can see that retail has been growing their money market funds has been cashing up a lot faster than institutions the last couple of weeks showing that retail is fearful of this market and the institutions don't seem particularly perturbed by it. So it, they are growing their cash positions, but at a slower rate than retail. That tells me that retail is more afraid uh, than institutions right now, uh, which means that they're probably going to catch retail off guard when this thing pumps into the end of the year. So let's watch this very, very closely to see when institutional money is coming down and if retail money is still continuing up on that. That means that they might have caught them, uh, <laughs> you know, caught them unawares. All right. So let's take a look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin today, turn the ATR bands back on because I wanted to see some stuff here. But Bitcoin today is up 2.48%. We're back up to 61,700 here right now, a little over that actually. And I noticed something was wrong on my chart the other day. My 200 was an EMA, not the SMA, which is the one I wanted. Uh, it's, I, I have adjusted that now and the 200 is actually above us up here at 63,444. So we actually do really need to get above that. We, you can see we came up rejected off that with that blow off top there. I wouldn't call it, I guess, a blow off top, more of a shooting star. Uh, and then from that, we came down into this bull flag here. And I'm still calling this a bull flag, even though we wicked down that body closed at not a bad spot. It was, it didn't, the body itself didn't necessarily make a lower low, even though the wick did. And you know what? I don't like counting wicks. Those things tend to be very shifty. Uh, so we're seeing right now a morning star pattern coming through on Bitcoin, which is also bullish right here. These three candles right here are making your textbook morning star pattern. Um, right here. So I like that. I like that a lot. If we close up where we are right now, that is going to be a nice morning star. That morning star could turn this formation we're currently looking at into a double 
bottom, the neckline of that double bottom being here at 63,000. Uh, or sorry, 62,832. But honestly, we really need to get above 63,444. Otherwise, uh, moving up to 62 doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll want to see that on Bitcoin. Micro strategy. We're going to talk about that real quick here. Up 7% today. This thing will not quit. It has been up above and holding above the five moving average here since September 18th. And it will not stop. Currently, I am priced out of this thing. I cannot sell a uh, cash secured put on this thing and make any actual money uh, right now uh, because it just went up too far too fast. I am now considering and looking at potentially potentially running poor man's covered calls on this thing here going forward. So I'm going to be looking at that. I'm going to be thinking about it. I'm going to ponder it here a little bit over the next couple of days, over the weekend, and see if that's something I want to do, or if perhaps I may have to liquidate some more of my Bitcoin miners so I can continue on my micro strategy journey. But right now, I am priced out because I don't have $20,000 in cash waiting for micro strategy. Now, I had 14, but I do not have 20. So I'm going to have to make maybe move some things around, maybe think about it. So one thing I do have uh, in my mind right now is all of the momentum oscillators are near the top. Okay, they're near the top which means we could see them come back down, which we could see this come back to test the 21, back to 167, 168. That'd be pretty good. I might actually decide to pick up shares at that position if it does come back down to the 21 E. Uh, I need to go back to Bitcoin real quick, point one thing out to you on the momentum oscillators down here. Okay, you can see that the orange one's near the top, the two fast ones near the bottom, the purple ones getting kind of middling around, in the, you know, meddling around in the middle there. Uh, we could see this end up being a fake out because of the momentum. Since orange is at the top and it's starting to curl over, we could see this thing come up again to the 200 SMA and then fail and then curl back down to the bottom of the ATR bands, which is down at $56,851 right now. So we could see this thing come down again and test kind of the center of this descending channel that we've been in since March. And it may not come out of it for a bit. All right. Okay. So the miners are up today. Oh, man. Corzy's up 6%. Wolf is up 6%. Clean Spark up 4. Digital up 4. Bit Farms up 2. Mara up 3. Riot up 2.9. Iron up 4.5. That is a good day. Cypher up 3.8. Let's take a look at some of these bad boys right now. So we are still consolidating. So this is a good area right now, actually. I like where we are consolidating and the fact that we're doing it. So let me go ahead and get a box here. Once we get out of this box, this box right here that we've been in for a little while here, but once we get out and above 975, like, and we do it decisively, get out of it and hold above it and stay above it, not just peak above it like we did here back in September 26th and 27th, if we, when we get above it and we hold above that, that's when we're done with this downtrend right here. That's when we're done with this compression. Notice we like to do that. Uh, it's done it back here uh, in September 2023, and it went until November 13th. And then after November 13th, look what happened. Absolute launch. Uh, we did it again back here, uh, May 2023. Really, Well, really, honestly, April 2023 until June 16th, and then we launched through July. Uh, we've done it back here from November 2022 until December 2022, and then we took off from $1.80 to $4, oh, doubling, you know. We did a little bit of a compression back here at the lows from June 2022 until July 27th, 2022, and then we took off, and we went from 380 all the way up to almost seven dollars on this thing so we do like to do compression and then rapid expansion so that's what we're looking at here we're looking at the compression stage right now and i am looking for that period of time when october turns into october we're looking for that coming through in the next couple of weeks so i think we're going to be seeing some significant volatility for now but i do think near the end of the month we'll start to see it start to tick up take us a little bit into october and then november is likely to be bonkers so Keep your eyes on that. Watch this compression. This is a, an accumulation zone. And of course, none of this is financial advice or a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any asset whatsoever. All right, let's take a look at Bit Digital. Bit Digital bouncing off the 200 here. I like that. That is textbook. I love that. This is a good morning star right here. As soon as Bit Digital gets above 319, we are 
on our way back up to that 384. Hopefully this time we will break it. I think we will because we've been compressing with price on this as well with the highs coming to the same place while lows are getting higher and higher. And once we break that 384, we're going to make uh, 438 look like weak sauce here at some point with Bit Digital. So watch out for that. And if you see Ethereum break to the upside, really watch out for Bit Digital because Bit Digital is going to take off off of that news. And they are up 5% today, so that's pretty good. Bit Farms also coming down to the bottom of the ATR bands down here. Uh, now, that in itself isn't necessarily good, but in the past, that has always proven to be a good place to pick up Bit Farms. You can see every time we've touched the bottom ATR band, we have been moved up. Uh, if not like a lot, you know, at least some kind of like 30% pop off of there. And we do have room all the way up to the 200 moving average up there at 230 five so that's pretty exciting for bit farms it's a, like an ugly pattern right now we are going lower we are going lower in a dramatic fashion let me draw a a channel there something like that okay something like that once we get out of this aggressive downward channel though i do think see bit farms popping up coming up into the back into the high threes maybe even fours again for bit farms but Again, for now, just like with all the other miners, we're sitting in that area of accumulation of, of slight sell off until we eventually take off. Let's take a look at Mara. How is Mara doing this morning? Mara is still kind of making this inverted head and shoulders for us. Let me go ahead and draw it out for you. Shoulder, head, shoulder. We need to get above 1840. And once we're above 1840, honestly, we've got room all the way up to let me regular one we honestly have room all the way back up to about 23 dollars maybe the 2275 area here we're going to get in between 1980 and two and 2275 as soon as we break this inverted head and shoulders on mara when is that going to happen i can't necessarily tell you but i do think it's likely to happen around this november you can also see that we've got a lot of runway to the upside look at all of these momentum oscillators the orange has been pinned to the bottom of this thing since august the fast moving ones are near the bottom right now. All they need to do is go from the bottom to the top. Last time they did that, they formed the head of this head and shoulders, and that was a 37% move. We are very likely to see that come through pretty soon. So I might be looking at loading up on some Mara calls here quite soon. And I'd be looking to ride them up to about $20, where I will assess if I'm going to hold on to them a little longer or just let them go from there. Uh, you can see we are right at the 21. As soon as we break that 21, I think we're going to see some interesting things out of Mara, especially since uh, we are making a bit of a pennant right here with comp with price compression there. As soon as we're done with that price compression, this thing is going to turn into that uh, inverted head and shoulders, and it is likely to return back to the $20, $22 range there very, very quickly on Mara. So actually, I might look at that today for next week. Okay, right. We're going to skip right. We're going to go into right, IREN right now. IREN just riding the 200-day moving average here over and over and over again it's in a similar sort of thing like with um mara with that inverted head and shoulders you can see me drawing it out there for you in this case for this one that inverted head and shoulders would take us at least to about eleven dollars and 26 cents when it plays out uh, so that's going to be pretty exciting for iron to see that happen there uh core z charging up core z's done going sideways it's done going sideways for a little bit it wants to get to the top of this rising wedge which i still have on my chart here so there is a rising wedge here we could get to the top of it and play above it for a bit and then break back down i do think at some point here before long like maybe after this little run up here it will uh, revisit 1087 i do think 1087 is in the cards for corsi at some point in time but for now it is making that breakout move up it is confirming a double bottom right here we got the bottom bottom boom as long as we hold above is 1245 we could make a new higher high up here around the um 14 range for core z so core z is actually still looking very 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 strong but keep in mind this ominous rising wedge that's happening in the core z chart right now if that thing breaks we could revisit we could be revisiting the nines maybe even the high eights on core z so be be, be aware of that don't necessarily be afraid of it, but be aware of it. Uh, Wolf, let's take a look at Wolf. Wolf, ooh, oh no, Wolf broke this uh, this trend line. It broke the trend line. So now that's not so good. That's really not particularly good for Wolf. Uh, Wolf needs to get up and above 4, 484. It's got to get back up above 484. Um, otherwise, this becomes a bearish look outlook right here. Right now, we are printing a bit of a bear flag. And if we cannot get over 432, then we won't even test 484 before coming back down to like 328 on that thing. 
So I don't love that, but there is some there's some hope there that the fast moving oscillators are all near the bottom while the orange is hovering near the middle. So we could see this thing curl back up and come out like a rocket. Uh, so we'll be looking at that, especially with it moving up 7% today, matching almost core Z on that move. That's pretty exciting. Let's take a look at Cypher real quick. Cypher. Oh, I really like where Cypher is right now. I really, really like where Cypher is right now. I want to see it get above the 200 day moving average at 395. Once we get above that, I'll be looking at this being an inverted head and shoulders, just like Mark. We got the shoulder, we got the head with a double bottom on it, followed by this other shoulder. And as soon as we get above that 200 day moving average, we've got room all the way up to 515 and potentially even up to $6 on Cypher. So Cypher's actually looking pretty good. And that actually uh, would is also playing out in the warrants. If you're looking at Cypher, you should also be looking at the warrants. Currently, it's at a dollar. This might go sub one dollar maybe for a few days early next week. But look, it is looking primed with all the oscillators down here at the bottom, the slow moving one at the bottom. This fast one's coming quickly to the bottom. The last time we went from the bottom to the top of this thing, we moved from 34 cents to 93 cents. Then it came back down to uh, 34 cents and rocketed up to two dollars and 22 cents if we did a similar move right now we would see a move up let's see that's 500 percent. we would be touching five dollars on this thing if we did a similar move with the orange oscillator down here moving up from the bottom to even just the middle or up to that 75 percent mark which is going to be at like 60 on my oscillator here this thing could move all the way up to like three four dollars so actually that's actually very exciting i might pick some of these up if I can find the cash to do so. All right, last two things. Robo taxi event was yesterday and Tesla tanked off of that info. That is why I did not play it. Tesla is a classic sell the news company. Now there was some pretty very exciting things coming out of this news. They are making these robo taxis. They are going to be cheap. Optimus robots are making huge strides. This company is making a future that is going to be unrecognizable from today in conjunction with, let's move on to NVIDIA, those who's having their AI summit with NVIDIA, which is also talking about how, here we go, we are, this is came from their VP. We are on the dawn of a new industrial revolution. And you know what? I believe him. I think that there's a not too distant future where it is relatively unrecognizable and it will be ushered in partially uh, in, in no small part by these two companies. And that is why I'm watching them closely. That's why I talk about them. That's why I'm very interested in it. Uh, today, NVIDIA is in a rising wedge right now. So I do think NVIDIA is going to see a little bit of a sell-off. I think those two gamblers I was talking about yesterday that were putting in nearly $10 million in covered calls on Tesla near the money will likely make out quite well on their position, probably collecting, you know, 30 to 50% of it in a week or two. But I do think the overall trend is going to remain upward and we might see this thing touching, you know, one 40 to 160, you know, anywhere in there, anywhere between 140 and 160 here uh, in honestly no time, probably after the next earnings date, I would not be surprised to see that start to happen uh, in when is this? Um, in November. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing up at 150, 160 in November, especially if they say Blackwell's happening now, this thing's going to launch. Uh, let's take a look at Tesla real quick. We'll, we'll do a real quick analysis of Tesla. Tesla did a boom, um, absolute dump all the way to the bottom of the ATR band here hit 214 this morning. Uh, it's back up to 220. Now, traditionally, Tesla has been a pretty good buy at the ATR band. You can see here it bounced from, uh, it came all the way down to 182, moved up to 227 pretty quick after. Uh, down here, is, it went below the, the bottom ATR band, went from 138 all the way up to 199. Bottom of the ATR band, uh, 161, and from there moved up to 183. It moves up from the bottom of the ATR band. Usually now you need to watch it shake out a little bit. Like you can see right he back here in January, it hit the bottom of the ATR band and stayed down there for like a week and a half or so before coming up. Uh, so you will want to watch it and see what this candle formation that it's making today is actually pretty promising for a bottom of the ATR band move. So I wouldn't be surprised. Like if this is a hammer, if this turns into a hammer today, I might buy this up. Uh, and buy it up to uh, like 240, 250 again. Wouldn't be too surprised. Now, uh, that's uh, it could sell off further, but I'll be watching it very, very closely. And that's all I've got for you today. Please like, comment, subscribe, check out the Trade Cave store link in the description as well as the channel bio and have a profitable day.